Welcome back. In this video, we'll talk about the different types of necrosis. The first in our list is the coagulative necrosis, and this involves ischemia to any organ. In this type, the cell outline is preserved, but the inner components are damaged. So we do see the cell cytoplasmic membrane, but the inner components are heavily changed, like a nuclei that has disappeared, or a cytoplasmic matter that is more receptive to dye. If we zoom out, the entire organ will preserve its shape, although it's going to be dead, so we might see some change in color, but the general overall shape will be preserved. The second type is the liquefactive necrosis, and this involves more bacteria and watery material. We see it in bacterial abscesses and brain infarcts. In this type, neutrophils will aggregate and release a lot of lysosomal enzymes. These are digestive enzymes that will eat everything locally. So we're left with a big goo or mishy component filled with dead cells, a lot of debris, and exudative material. Over time, the body will filter out or suck in the watery components, and so we're left with a big cavity. So the overall shape of the organ is not preserved. Early on, we'll see some gooey material, and later on, we'll see a big hole. The next step is the caseous necrosis, which is of course notorious for TB infections and some fungi infections. In this type, the body will isolate an infecting organ, such as TB cells, and put them all in one place, and then surround the entire infective organism with a big sphere made of macrophages. So if we cut it open, we will see a thick wall made of macrophages and protective cells, and the inner material is made of dead cells a lot of TB or other infective organisms, and a lot of debris. The next type we have is the fat necrosis. In this type, we have fat cells that have simply died. This can be the results of trauma or non-trauma. The non-trauma is most likely enzymatic. Trauma is most commonly to affect areas that are very rich in fat, such as the breasts, and the non-traumatic mostly occur in areas rich with enzymes, such as the pancreas. In any case, dead fat tissue will release lipase, and these lipase will continue to degrade more and more fat cells, as they release more lipase. And all this free fat will bind to calcium in a process known as saponification. So if we take a sample, we will see some dead fat tissue, which is evident by fat cells that don't have a nuclei in the periphery, We'll see some saponification, which is basically calcium, and that appears dark blue in H and E stains. The next type is the fibrinoid necrosis, and in this type, the wall of the blood vessels is damaged or exposed, most commonly as a result of immune reaction. And as the wall is exposed, fibrin and other blood components will seep into the wall and cause it to be thicker. So if we take a sample of an affected vessel, we will see a thick wall that is very pinkish. And finally, we have the gangrenous necrosis. This is simply the results of lack of blood, most commonly affecting distal organs, such as the fingers or toes. In this area, the distal organ will not have blood for a very long time, and that will cause the organ to simply die. So in a way, it's an ischemic insult. But it can also be the results of infection, such as in diabetic foot with complicated ulcer, and in this case, it's more of a liquefactive issue. Alright guys, that's all I have. Thank you so much for watching, and hopefully this helped.